The Bayside Report, the Riverside Report for the week, part two. Hi, Garth, all of you. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm great. I'm it's excited. Great to see you. I'm so excited to be here for part two of Avionics. Absolutely. A memoir. If you've missed out on the first episode, just go back. It's episode 25, titled Book Reading, part one. Without further ado, Mr. Saccone, take it away. Chapter, um, chapter three, floor 14, 7.30 p.m. later that night. Goran! Goran! Wake up, buddy! Get the hell off me right now this instance. I barked back at Gary, throwing the covers off myself and rolling over trying to savor the last of my pre-club nap that was oh so very necessary. Once Dennis and I opened the door to our palace for the two nights, I immediately threw my baggage onto the ground, took my uniform off, and I dug into my drug bag. After taking three Xanax, I fell right on <laughs> I fell right on the encompassing king size bed and drifted away into a heavenly sleep. Three Xanax will put you out for days. Yeah, he's That'll out. even kill you. It was now getting uh <clears throat> sorry, it was now getting around the time to embark for the night as the children had returned from their meeting uh ready to wreak havoc. Get your ass up, Corin, <laughs> and hop in the shower. Kalat's coming at 8.15 on the dot, Gary said back with a sharp and brash demeanor. After getting my bearings and finally waking up fully, I stumbled into the deluxe bathroom with nothing on but my Calvin Klein briefs. In the living room, in the living room I can hear Landon and Anthony teaming up on Dennis as usual while Gary was probably either handling business calls or smoking a joint on the balcony. Or doing both at the same time. Like a boss. After my steam shower, I felt refreshed and ready to go as I pulled out my cleanly pressed boating shorts along with a polo no, button-up and Sperry's. <laughs> also... So he's a frat boy. So he's a, so he's a frat boy pilot. <laughs> oh, at Clemson or All, some SEC school. Also in the bottom of my Louis Vuitton bag was a gram of Coke, which I ever so graciously pulled out and utilized of course oh my after God. getting dressed and snorting four lines of powder <laughs> i, rem- I four? remembered you did three on the play i remembered to check my phone that i hadn't touched uh in what would have been five hours at this point my estimation it was 10 angry missed calls and 100 texts from my hounding wife oh so she's also we didn't really get backstory on her being a hounding wife we do know she's pregnant though I guessed fairly closely with exactly 10 calls and somewhat close to 100 texts. I could almost Holy feel fuck. my heart beating out of my chest at this point. I thought I was going to grow jet engines and skyrocket <laughs> through the tall ceiling. Doing what I usually do to calm myself down after I ingest a large amount of drugs, I paced in the circle <laughs> a couple of times and counted to 10, and then I hit the call back button. So, so pacing in a circle and counting to 10 is what I imagine you would have done in stressful situations no, that at wouldn't, this point in your life. Oh, that wouldn't work. Hello? I heard Bella say sounding half enraged with, with, and half asleep. I did forget about the four-hour time difference. Three hours. Well, you put four. <laughs> That's not wrong. Now here is where I could harness the BS factor with any person after calming myself down. It consisted of keep of keeping an exciting and upbeat voice along with showing sympathy and making the uh, opposition feel appreciated. I guess Gary's method had rubbed off on me after oh, all. Where did I pull that? Hi, beautiful. I'm so sorry I missed your call, Bella. I had been in a very deep sleep ever since getting to the hotel. It was a long flight. You understand how that is, right? I, re- I relayed back completely nailing the bs on the hammer he wasn't lying though of course honey i just wanted to make sure you were okay and everything you know i worry about you bella said right back buying every last ounce of what i just said completely nailed he didn't even lie though (laughs) he told her the truth i honestly did feel bad about hiding my my drug use from my wife but i felt like it was something i just had to do especially when uh especially when her getting scared of me even Stepping into a cockpit. Imagine if she knew I had done it under the influence. <laughs> and yeah, I knew within the next nine months I'd have to be, I'd have to mature into a responsible parent. But I was responsible enough already, right? <laughs> Not at all. So glad you understand about everything. And I feel especially bad that you're in bed 
And but how did your day that you're already in bed? But how did your day go? I said back, showing her attention while doing high knees in the bathroom <laughs> mirror to try and calm myself down. <laughs> Bella went on to her usual blah blah story about her clients and how they were so unappreciative of her and blah blah. Dr. Johnson across the street is putting in a new pool. I was only listening to not even half of what she was saying. I was too busy getting caught up in my high as I was as I kept making funny faces in the mirror. After getting anxious and needing a change of scenery, I quickly wrapped up the conversation with a quick lie about I was going to the theater show with Dennis and exchanged the casual, I love you so much, see you on Thursday. I quickly hung up the phone and walked out into the living room to see everybody packing up their drug... Re- Go back? Refundums? Referendums? Oh, referendums. Sorry, I'm, I'm a little slow. I don't, no, that's a slow sense. They're drug referendums for the night and heading out the door. That makes no sense. <laughs> Me being the last one out, I quickly grabbed my bag and followed out the door while there were already a hundred feet down the hallway. Feeling like an Olympic sprinter, I dashed down the hallway in what had to be <laughs> under two seconds top, and I even managed to come to a halting stop five feet behind Anthony's back, all in boating shoes on top of this at all. <laughs> Everybody turned around simultaneously, not knowing what the hell just oh, happened. Boating shoes. Looking at what Gar- a fucking athlete. Looking at Gary and Anthony's wide smiles and crazy eyes, I already knew they were on the same boat as me <laughs> at the moment. While Dennis and Landon looked at us like we were psychopath, psychotic. I'm sorry. While yeah. Meanwhile, Dennis and Landon looked at us like we were psychotic. We soon all calmed down and walked together like brothers. It truly felt like we were in the slow motion movie scene of The Hangover or something crazy. <laughs> the, uh, we all uh, jeered and geez. cranked jokes as we walked toward the elevator lobby, but one thing really stuck out to me. It was the fact that there was an extra person with us. Oh, reliable Dennis. Look at Dennis coming through. Every time we went out, Dennis was would furiously refuse and rather take strolls in the city where where we... Oh, I'm sorry. Every time we went out, Dennis would, fu- would furiously refuse and rather take strolls in whatever city we were or just stay in the suite and play some kind of game on his phone. <laughs> it was actually going to be nice to have somebody else in presence that wasn't clinically insane like the other three. <laughs> or like himself. Or like himself. <laughs> As we walked off the elevator, the lobby was gorgeous. The, lo- the lobby of the gorgeous W was electrifying and completely insane. There was a live band playing old covers of Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin while young <laughs> female while one, young female waitresses danced uh, around in provocative clothing what? carrying dozens of mixed drinks. It's just a Marriott hotel. It's not that safe. It's a W. It's the Wyndham. It's still not that cool. Old and young it's... alike uh, mingled and made their way through the lobby in their sharp Armani suits <laughs> while the women always made sure that they had the most expensive designer dresses. Oh, the way of luxury was a strange one. A meager Tuesday felt like it was New Year's a New Year's Eve party or an occasion on any occasion at a given place. This was a lifestyle I was glad to be accustomed to. The five of us slowly made our way through the the bustling crowd finally to the front entrance where the one and the only Collot was waiting bitch. for us right at the front door with a friendly smile and waving and a wave greeting us. Dennis and I, being the only two to actually acknowledge this poor guy while Gary, Landon, and Anthony actually acted like he didn't exist or, or he was a peasant in medieval times. I always made sure I gave Collot a nice tip because I truly did appreciate having him in our presence. He was the only normal human being I could exchange pleasantries with and actually hold a conversation that didn't contain something about money or drugs along with no ex uh, ex ex explicit i can't expletive thank you i can't talk explicit <clears throat> he was the kind of man that you want your daughter to marry <laughs> collot Villa blanca collot make it snappy and while you're at it be ready to pick us up around 1 30 a.m sharp got it Gary said brash. Early night. Of course, Mr. Cohn. Anything for you, sir. Clot said back, completely ignoring Gary's rude rude manner. It was remarkable that he still put up with the way that he's been treated. As we drove through the bustling Hollywood traffic, I couldn't help but notice the ridiculous amount of people walking the streets 
on this beautiful 80 degree night. <laughs> Cars were everywhere, going every which direction, but thank the Lord that villa was the only meager half mile away. Slowly making our way through traffic, I could I could myself get I could myself getting antsy in my pants and just <laughs> contemplating running the rest of the way. <laughs> I read that verbatim. It's okay. <laughs> I took a glance over to Gary, and I could already tell he had the exact same idea as me <sighs> just by looking at his face. Gary, oh, Jesus Christ. I said sharply under my breath to him, you thinking what I'm thinking? He said back already knowing what I was about, what I was thinking. I know it's coming. My count. One, two, three. We both blasted out of the limo like rockets, not even regarding the reactions of the gang still in the limo. We both dashed down <laughs> the busy sidewalk like cheetahs, <laughs> dodging bypassers with finesse while trying not to cause a self-induced heart attack. Jesus. I felt like I was on top of the world. Goran Townsend, a dashing pilot, conquering amazing <laughs> Running feats. Running down the street At like such a, a young moron. age, alongside one of the most powerful men in the economic <laughs> world. Gary and I must have ran a half mile in all of a minute, maybe 45 seconds at the pace that we were going. We reached Villa and immediately and immediately man a move for the VIP line, which had all of five people in it compared to the couple hundred of everyday Hollywood residents trying to get a glimpse of luxury. Jeez. Gary, it's been a minute, said the muscular black bouncer who gave him a friendly brotherly hug and handshake. <laughs> Damn right it has been, Marcus. I feel great to be in the city of angels tonight. This was 2015. It's okay. But he's, <laughs> It's okay. But here's the skinny. It's going to be myself and the usual gang, plus another guy by the name of Dennis. They'll be here in about 10 minutes, but me and my pilot here got the cocaine ants in our pants <laughs> and decided to ditch the limo. Gary said, literally, with no more oxygen left in his system to take to talk after our dash oh, shit. sounds good mr cohen <laughs> sounds good no worries bud <laughs> sounds good mr cohen your other partners from wolfman investments Wolf will, will also be attending here oh, tonight shit. and will be arriving within the next hour said back not to not so scary marcus maybe all the bouncers were this nice fantastic <laughs> man have a great nice gary said to the big bouncer i gave him a friendly nod and quickly followed Gary into the club. Huh. I'm starting to think you were drunk right in this chapter. <laughs> I was. Because, dude, these, I was. these sentences, I was. chapter three didn't make a fucking lick of sense. I, I would drink the bat blue and right. Oh that was God. towards the end. Listen, so. I'm going to be honest. That was a brutal <laughs> chapter to read. If you want me to popcorn read, I'm more than willing no, to. No, no, no. This is this is my show at this point. <laughs> Your this guest is host. my narration. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, fuck. So you could see how out of touch 17 you know, as a high schooler, I was, um, I don't know any, I don't know any multi-million dollar investment guy that's staying at a hotel. Usually you got your own spot. I don't know any multi-million dollar financial guru is running down the streets of LA with their, with their pilot. He so. had coke ants in the pants. He had cocaine ants in the pants. And he told the bound casually, hey, by casually, the way, hey, I'm fucked up on coke and just sprinted here uh, half a mile. I got a few more guys coming just so you're prepared. Yeah, yeah. Give me one second. I got to grab uh, water. You want one? You want uh, water? I'm good. I have one right you here. You have refreshments? Yeah, you I'm good. I, I have a listening beer. I packed some listening Miller lights. You came down here with the water supply. We're ready. Part two. Part two is right. going right along. So yeah, this is. I don't know what the fuck I just read, <laughs> but we're on to chapter four. It's a Tuesday night. Second floor suite, Villa Blanca. Ah, uh, Villa Blanca, one of the most well-respected nightclubs on the West Coast, and only for the wealthy. Gary and I trugged our way through the large <laughs> crowd of most of most average, well-off Los An Los Angeles citizens. Oh, All gosh. enjoyed the crazy party scene. There was a DJ at the front of the massive dance floor dousing the jam-packed crowd with what looked like a bottle of tequila. <laughs> we finally made our way through the spiral staircase where we would find our way to the VIP level or the I'm better than you floor <laughs> for Jesus Christ. floor as most people referred to it. <clears throat> Once we got to the top, the next bouncer looked at us and smiled. 
knowing that we were con constant returners to this place. As we walk through the hall with the balcony overlooking the dance, flo the dance floor scene, I noticed somebody familiar. Holy crap, that's not... Dave Franco, my <laughs> man! The cameo, yes. So great to see you again. Gary said to the Hollywood star, like <laughs> it was Franco. a pal from middle school. My jaw dropped to the floor, literally. <laughs> always Dave a, Franco. Always a pleasure, Gary. Didn't think I'd be running into you here tonight. How's business, man in, how's business been in good old Manhattan? The star said back so calmly and with <laughs> grace, just like on the big what? screen. <laughs> It's Dave Frank. It's not even like I can see it. It was like <laughs> it's Oh my god! Oh shit! Okay. I'm Always sorry. good, man. Always good. I'd like to introduce you to my pilot, Mr. Goran Townsend. He's a big fan of yours. Sticking out my hand in slow motion with my mouth still agape, I gave him a firm handshake. It's such a pleasure, Dave. I've been following you for so long, and I never thought this moment would happen. I said back like a nervous six-year-old. <laughs> Dude, what is fucking I could myself jittering out of my pants. You forgot so many conjunctions oh after God. chapter two. I'm drunk, too. Great to meet you too, man. I'm sure you're top you're top notch with the sticks and you're flying this or this man around. How about I'll stop over to your table on later on and throw down with you guys, Dave said back. Simultaneously, Gary and I said, Hell yeah. Hell yeah, brother. Oh my god. Okay, here we go. He gave a quick chuckle and we bid farewell for now. <laughs> this had to be the best moment of my life so far. After that, Gary Dave and I... Dave Franco meeting Dave Franco. It's the best moment. You're not, not your kid being born. He said so far. So he said so far. far. We got nine months of the your, kids born. Okay. After that, Gary and I made our way <sighs> over to our reserved room. It boasted big leather couches and recliners, a couple coffee tables, a huge bar with any alcoholic beverage imaginable, along with small kitchenette and a restroom, of course. We immediately threw down our bags and went right to the back of the bar where we grabbed all the bottles of liquor we deemed necessary. First, we cracked open the fresh bottle of Sky Vodka and made a toast. Mm. Talk about luxury. <laughs> Sky <laughs> Vodka. That's because that was all your broke 17-year-old ass could afford. Oh, I can't take it. This is too much. Cheers to success and to a hell of a night, <laughs> Gary. <much. laughs> Cheers. <Sky vodka. laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Guys. Cheers to success and a hell of a night. And to hell of a night, Gary <sighs> announced. We clanged our shot glasses and threw them down like water. Ten shots, three Percocets, <laughs> and a line of Coke later. The rest three of the Percocets. crew walked the rest of the crew walked in the room while Gary and I were exchanging stories about old times and whatever else crossed our minds. I'm guessing you guys got cocaine ants, said Anthony, chuckling, while Landon and, and Dennis laughed as well. Wait, hold on, hold on. They weren't even at the club yet. Yes, and they got down <laughs> 10 shots, <laughs> three Percocets, and a line of coke. How long did it take a lot to get to the club, at least? According to en <laughs> according to entering the club, 10 minutes. <laughs> 10 minutes, they did 10 shots, they said three they'll Percocets. Be here in 10 minutes. Okay. Wow, that's impressive. <clears throat> I'm guessing you guys got cocaine ants, said Anthony, chuckling, while Landon and Dennis laughed as well. <sighs> Damn right, boys. Now, come on. Let's get you guys to catching up, Gary said sporadically. <laughs> Landon and Anthony got straight to business while Dennis awkwardly sat down next to me, not knowing what to do. I quickly poured him a shot of vodka <laughs> and handed it to him. He had a worried look on his face. <laughs> All right, Denners. I claimed out already starting to slur my words. Cheers to being successful pilots. I threw down my shot with ease while he struggled and started coughing and gagging <laughs> after he barely downed it. Everybody busted out laughing while he even gave out a little chuckle. <coughs> Don't worry, rookie. It gets easier and easier as you go, hollered Anthony right in his face over the loud music downstairs. Dennis and I kept going and going and, well... I think you get the point by now. 
Eight rounds later, Dennis turned into a completely different person. He was a lot easier going and actually had a personality for once. Eight shots of sky. The two, the two of us talked about our pilot stories for a good hour while the Wall Street boys talked with their colleagues uh, from Wolfman Investments, which I hadn't even noticed their arrival. Come outside to the back balcony, Dennis. I got something you'll like, I said. He got a bit suspicious, but while still smiling and clearly enjoying himself, he followed nonetheless. We slipped out the the sliding door and stepped onto the spacious deck with a beautiful overlook of downtown Los Angeles, with cars bustling and people walking under us on the street. It was a mildly warm and starry July night. Dennis and I sat in the large comfortable seats, where I pulled out a couple pre-rolled joints just for the two of us. Man... Come on. Wait. Man, come on. I can't be doing that kind of crap. What if we get caught or something bad happens? Said the still worried novice. (laughs) I instantly began to break out in laughter. Dennis, do you understand who we are and who we work for? We fly planes, not even close to the size of an A380 or a Boeing 747. And we make more than they will (laughs) ever see in their lives. I've done drugs on the regular (laughs) with Gary and all of his buddies, and not once have I had to pass a drug test. (laughs) Trust me, buddy. We're golden. So sit back and relax. I said ever so reassuring. This is fiction, everybody. (laughs) I know all that, Goran, but I guess you're right at the end. I just need to calm down sometimes and enjoy the ride. Ten minutes later, we were both feeling untouchable and laughing as hard as we could, just exchanging stupid jokes and enjoying this fantastic night. After feeling a bit exhausted, we both walked back into what only had been about 27 minutes. Landon and and the somehow still conscious Gary were ingesting pills, while (laughs) Anthony and the two other men from Wolfman seemed either to be talking about business or just slurring words and remarks over a game of Pong. Very rich people. They play Pong in the VIP section of the club. They play Pong in the VIP of the club with Wolfman Investments. Dennis and I knew what it wasn't exactly our bearings to get involved with this business aspect of things, even though you really couldn't call this business by any means. (laughs) The two highly accomplished pilots stumbled out into the hall to the loud, blaring rap music playing under us to the large mob (coughs) when I ran into Dave Franco once again. (laughs) Dave Franco. Okay, so chapter five, we (coughs) did 10 Percocets. Oh my God. Or we did three Percocets, 10 shots of Sky, a line of Coke, smoked a joint. It's going downhill pretty fast. We walked on a balcony. 27 and we minutes. met dave franco and they yeah the record timing of the shots the percocet and the coke is 37 minutes <laughs> Jesus. 37 minutes 30. for a joint a line of coke 10 shots of sky vodka <laughs> sky and three percocets so you could see now, sky was high end to you at 17 years <laughs> it old was not very educated on much at 17 chapter five uh, the package is intercepted uh, july 25th 2009 the day after as I open up my eyes, the bright California sun immediately shut them right back into their place after harshly blinding me. Where the hell was I and what time was it? I couldn't have been later than 9 a.m. I turned over and found myself laying in the hotel suite. Gary was sprawled out on the couch while Anthony and Landon were curled up like little girls on the floor with blankets over them. Mm-hmm. I checked my phone and surprisingly see only a couple missed texts from Bella. But now I was in no state to reply. The time on my phone had said 8.50 a.m. After rolling out of my king-size bed, I stumbled over to the bathroom, still feeling the effects from last night. After after reliving myself... Relieving. Relieving. No. Is that how it's spelled? You you (laughs) have a lot of typos. You see, I didn't peek until college. I didn't peek until college. After relieving myself (laughs) and brushing my teeth, I noticed something strange. Where the hell was Dennis? The dimwit. He had to be some... He had had to be here somewhere. Nothing too bad could have happened to him after only what had to be his first good night of fun. I trudged over to Gary's bed and started shaking him softly. What the hell do you want? 
He barked back in his usual cynical undertone. Usual Wall Street tone. Uh, Gary, your co-pilot is nowhere to be found. Just thought I should let you know, buddy. I said back, still half asleep. Oh, yeah, Dennis. Well, he got a bit rowdy last night with Dave Franco. (laughs) They started jumping off the balcony into the crowd and were harassing the bouncers. Right before we left, they took them both in handcuffs and down to the police station. Dave Franco got him arrested. (laughs) I'm almost positive Dave got released since, well, he's Dave Franco. (laughs) We have to bail out Dennis sometime this morning, Gary said. I was in absolute disbelief. I really blacked out after talking to the one and only Dave Franco. (laughs) And not the little harmless Dennis. He must have been in absolute terror right now. I could only imagine him sitting in the ball, sitting in a ball in the corner of a jail cell with a group of masculine guys surrounding him. All right, we'll just hold tight, Gary, with the rest of the boys. I'm calling Kalat and going to get him myself. I reported back quickly. All right, whatever. And by the way, those assholes from Klopsman canceled our financial negotiations today. Klopsman? Is that K- a- K-L-O-P-S-M-A-N. Oh, Klopsman and Wolfman. All right, whatever. <clears throat> and by the way, those assholes from Klopsman canceled our financial negotiations today. So we're heading back to New York around 5, buddy. I know you'll get us you'll get this all sorted out, said Gary completely in a brotherly tone. I dashed out into the hallway in a pair of Nike black shorts, a plain white tee, and a pair of sandals. When I got to the lobby when I got to the lobby, I was surprised to see a somewhat empty W lobby. Very strange to the hotel of this multitude, I dashed outside to find Claude waiting in the reserved parked limousine. I made him immediately dash. I made an immediate dash to get in. It was time to save Dennis. On the way to LAPD, Kala and I actually had some time to chat about everything instead of having Gary bark in his face repeatedly and making fun of his <laughs> ethnic background. Oh my God. It was surprising. <laughs> it was surprising hot this morning in the City of Angels as Kala and I rolled through the LA streets having a nice conversation. Kala, I've been dying to ask you this. How do you put up with all the crap from Gary Landon and Anthony? I would have reached my limit at this point, man. I asked. Goran, let me tell you a story about home and how I got here, Kalat said in his broken English tone. I lived in slums of Mumbai. Terrible place. There is feces and defecation (laughs) all over the street. My My father and I raised my five other siblings together ever since my mother passed away when I was a very young age. My father is a very tough man, and I will be too. When I move here, when I move here, I left all of my family at home. They want me to live here and be successful. So every month, ever since I live here, I have sent back a lot of money so now they can live in a better home in a better part of Mumbai. Shout if it Kalat. wasn't for Gary, I'd be in a back alley and a disgrace to this family. He has given me life. Kalat finished and stared to get tear and started to get teary eyed. Sorry. A drunk 17 year old wrote this. Well, Kalant, you're in the greatest country on earth. You now are successful and have the opportunity to bring your whole family over here. And you guys can all live a prosperous life. I'm really proud of you, buddy. I said, <laughs> sincerely, thank you. Gorda. <laughs> you literally, you, li- oh you literally <laughs> wrote, thank <laughs> you. You purposely left uh, out the H. It was 2015. It happens. Thank you very much, <laughs> Goran. I wanted to be accurate. I want you to picture Kalat. You are great friend <laughs> oh, no. and awesome no, no, guy. No, no, no. Kalat no, rejoiced. No. It had to be the first time he had said something. Make he had said someone make him feel good about himself. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm off by since six he Labatt got Blue. here, <laughs> Kalat and I made our way to the police station while talking oh. about the past and some memories we recalled. He shared stories about his days playing soccer with the other boys his age while back in India, along with the hardships he had been through. After hearing about the sanitary conditions and housing setups, I thank God I was born in the United States. A couple minutes later, we pulled into the parking lot of the police station. 
I immediately got out and rushed to the front doors. Hopefully, Dennis wasn't too out <coughs> of it at this point. <clears throat> I walked into the large facility and made my way over to the overnight detainment sector <laughs> after opening the door the drunk and, tank. <laughs> after opening the door and stepping into a small waiting area i spoke with a cop at the desk and told me my intentions hello officer my name is goran townsend <laughs> and i am here looking for dennis matterson he should have came here at some point last night i said politely <laughs> oh yeah don't worry about it don't worry we have him in there said the cop sarcastically as if he had caused a lot of trouble him and Dame, dave franco were both brought in together a complete mess. <laughs> Dave didn't have shoes and Dennis was trying to bite him. <laughs> Dave was picking up. Dave was picked up within a half hour and was let off with some minor charges. Just a tap on the wrist. And the same will follow with him. The cop said very kindly. <laughs> Why didn't he get released? about it all. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. And I apologize for his behavior last night. It was kind of his first night out. And he had never really had any fun. I said back jokingly, <laughs> uh, "Don't worry, Goran. It happens to the best of uh, the best people. Just sign this release document, and I'll have him <laughs> over, and I'll call him out over the speaker, <laughs> like it's fucking high school." He said straight I'm to sure the point. I'm sure that's not how jail works. In that's any not way. how jail works. They're not like they're not like <laughs> Dennis Madison. Please come. <laughs> To You're the pickup office. Release, Dennis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now up the back. Dennis Madison, <laughs> please come to the office. Dennis Madison, oh, to the office. Holy fuck, dude. Yeah. I'm sorry I'm putting you through You're this. Okay. Yeah. Holy it's, it's, a ride. it's a ride. <laughs> it's a ride. Dennis came out of the back room looking like a complete disaster. <coughs> his shirt was unbuttoned with his hairy chest hanging out. He had stains and wrinkles all over his pants, and his hair looked like a wild bush. The second he saw me... We couldn't help. He couldn't help but to smile. Garan, I knew I would see you at some point. Oh. He said as he hugged me. That was the worst experience of my life. I thought I was going to rot in hell for eternity. But man, I missed a great. But man, you missed a great night. Why did you fall asleep so early? He said as we walked out the door into the parking lot. He didn't even seem phased by the fact that he was just charged with public intoxication and disorderly <laughs> conduct. He didn't give Dennis, a fuck. What the hell even happened last night? I asked, absolutely dumbfounded by the way he was acting. How could somebody go from being extremely uptight to not giving two cares in the world about anything? Well, you passed out <laughs> in the Gary's VIP room sometime around 11 after we Early had a few night. drinks with my Dave. With his Dave? Oh, it's spicy. <laughs> Dennis and Dave have a romance. Wow, look, I was inclusive even though for the time. <laughs> After that, we said <laughs> screw it and down some more then decided to jump off the balcony and go crowd surfing. <laughs> wow, it was an amazing, it was an awesome experience. But then the bouncers got all pissed off at us and had the cops arrest us. <laughs> After a half hour, we got dropped off here. Dave got picked up by what I'm guessing was either his brother or entourage. James Franco. Yeah, James Franco. James came in. Yeah, I got you, just, brother. He's just like, yeah, it's like, it's like a high school brother just right down the road. <laughs> yeah. Either way, we exchanged phone numbers and he told me to call him next time we were out this way. Man, what an awesome night. I can't wait to do it all again tonight, said the new Dennis that had somehow metamorphosed from caterpillar to a large monarch, monarch butterfly oh, wow. in all of 12 hours. Holy fuck, dude. Well, I hate to break it to you, buddy, but we're actually heading back home tonight. I guess Gary's meeting got rescheduled or something. We're rotating out of here sometime around five, I said solemnly, as we pulled out into the busy streets just to wait in traffic. Ah, oh, man. Well, all right, said Sad and Dennis. Looks like it's going to be a <laughs> relaxing pool day for the both of us, huh? He said in a more optimistic tone. <clears throat> for once in my life, Dennis actually had a solid idea. I calmly agreed as we rode back slowly to the hotel. Nothing better than some alcoholic beverages oh, and specialties before a flight. <laughs> the second I got back to the hotel, I dashed into the quiet <laughs> internet cafe area and immediately dialed Bella's number. 
Once she answered, I unraveled my fake story of how I watched a wonderful play at the Walt Disney Theater and <laughs> told her how flawless the production of Jersey Boys really was. Jersey Boys. And cutting, and cutting to the chase, I let her know I'd be home <laughs> that night and I couldn't wait to see her gorgeous face. <laughs> oh, honey, I'm so glad. Oh. I'll promise to wait up for you, okay? Just please text me or call me when you take off and make sure you have a safe flight, she said ever so caringly. I truly was lucky to have somebody as compassionate as her. After saying, I love you and see you tonight, I quickly hung up the phone and dashed straight to the elevator. After going up to the room, I grabbed a towel and changed into my swim attire. Meanwhile, everybody else was gone except for Dennis, who was searching through one of the left behind bags, I'm guessing looking for drugs. Wow, Dennis really hit a, <laughs> hit a steep cliff. Dennis and I both found a nice supply to keep our senses while laying poolside. We ingested our share and both giggled our merry ways straight down to a lawn chair. It was a very relaxing afternoon with it. It was a very relaxing afternoon coupled with about five mixed drinks. Oh my God. And the Xanax we had. Oh, ingested. great. <laughs> I was glued to the chair the whole time baking in the California sun. Jeez. Three o'clock hit and it was time to get back to business we headed up <laughs> three to hours they laid by the pool for three hours we headed up to the rooms stumbled and stumbling and laughing about <laughs> last night's encounters the minute we walked into the room it was time to get back to the grips of reality we both headed over to the <laughs> we both headed over to get the powder white simultaneously uh, here we go i be like how does dennis degenerate he just degenerated overnight, literally. I, I, I wish I had it. Not even 24 hours. He's all of a sudden a coke addict. You got a glimpse of Hollywood. Oh, my God. Okay. <clears throat> what chapter is this? Six? This is chapter six. All right. So it's to chapter eight, but chapter seven and eight are like a page or two. What's funny is if you look at the end of chapter three, <laughs> it says three o'clock, which in pilot terms means 3 a.m., and then you start chapter six <laughs> with seventeen hundred sharp, it which would be what four o'clock, right? That's four o'clock. I need an editor. No, five o'clock. I That'd be five o'clock. Yeah, yeah, that's five o'clock. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> there's a lot of flaws in it's avionics. Okay. It's okay. The, the officially released version will be much more cleaned up. Oh my god. Okay. Are you okay? What page? Yeah. What page are you on? Twenty-eight. Okay, so I think it goes to see Here. what the last page is. Thirty-five. Oh, son of a bitch! Yeah, thirty-five. All right, sounds okay. good. We're home. Home stretch. Chapter six, seventeen hundred sharp. Four fifteen p.m. <clears throat> en route to LAX. It had turned into a dark and rainy afternoon in Los Angeles. Very rare for the climate, especially after the gorgeous morning filled with a relaxing pool session. We were heading west on L.A. freeway, straight for the large and overwhelming Los Angeles International Airport, full of tourists, immigrants, and whatever the hell oh else God. you could possibly think of. <laughs> right as we passed the iconic immigrants. LAX sign, the rain turned into a heavy downpour. Wow. Just perfect. My mind was racing into other places as we were about five minutes away from the terminal. The businessmen spent the day at the club in Beverly Hills, and were very under the influence while me and Dennis sat next to each other jittering. Oh, while me and Dennis sat next to each other jittering. Even though it had already been a day, I did miss my house and my wife, of course. I wouldn't even doubt it if we'd be flying somewhere else within the next couple of days, but at least I got to get my bearings set before I took off on another journey into Gary's world of clubs and business meetings. <laughs> having trouble there what's wrong Whirr, Mern, <laughs> this rain is nerds <laughs> whoa man this rain is nuts said gary slurring his words uncontrollably uh, uncontrollably ever since we stepped foot into the limousine everyone completely ignored what he was saying not even the slightest interest anthony was smiling while something entertained him on his iphone and landed was completely passed out with Asleep his and... head on the window. So we got an iPhone here. It's 2009. We're looking at like an <laughs> yeah, iPhone 3 yeah, with a... the fat brick chargers. <laughs> the iPhone 3S. 
Yeah, he wouldn't have had a BlackBerry. I don't even, he, was, he was an iPhone guy. Was the iPhone even out by then? Yeah, first release was 2007. Okay. We pulled into the private aviation sector of the airport and drove right into the dry hangar where the same G5 <laughs> awaited us for the return trip home. After everybody disembarked from the vehicle and stumbled into the plane's cabin, I went to Kalat and gave him my last farewells. Have a good trip home. So nice to see you again, Garan. Thank you for everything, he said in the soothing Indian tone. I gave him, <laughs> I gave him my thanks and waved goodbye as he drove back into the storm. Oh, After Dennis and I did about did our 20-minute <clears throat> flight check bouncing around like rabbits, we oh. hopped Jesus. We hopped up the stairs and into the cabin to find all three men sleeping like babies on the couches. Thank God, I thought. But Dennis and I were in no mood to babysit today. Setting up shop in the cockpit, we planned our flight route and communicated with air traffic control. As soon as we powered up the plane, we began to taxi out of the hangar. Gulfstream 4429, <laughs> you are clear to taxi runway Bravo 2. Weather shouldn't affect your rotation. Stop short and hold for takeoff clearances, said the controller in a clear tone. The extreme rarity of only waiting for around 10 minutes to take off was actually happening today, plus the fact we weren't delayed because of the weather was in was a complete disbelief. Run, runway Bravo 2, stop short and hold for, clear, for takeoff clearance, I repeated back to the controller. Within those 10 minutes of waiting to take off, I needed to calm myself down. <laughs> The efforts from what I ingested earlier were at their peaks as I felt I was going to explode right in the cockpit, only to leave Dennis to fly by himself. <laughs> he also was very jittery and on edge the whole time. Gulfstream 4429, you are clear for takeoff. The tower relayed. I repeated back clearly for takeoff and, and immediately began to roll down the long Los Angeles runway. And rotate. I pronounced as we lift off the ground over the dark sky, the city over the dark city of Los Angeles. Heavy turbulence ensured was as we finally broke our way out of the hell below into the bright, sunny, heaven-like atmosphere. Pure peacefulness. Good job, fellas. Shortly after maintaining our cruise altitude of thirty thousand feet, I handed the controls over to Dennis. Now it was my leg of the flight to sit back and relax for a little. For the next hour and a half, Dennis and I talked about experiences we had in the past couple of days. He just got arrested. He, he literally just got arrested. And how we couldn't wait to come back. Then all of a sudden, we encountered some issues. We were passing over the Rocky Mountains when all of a sudden, the plane began violently shaking and heading nose down. Straight for the mountain range. Oh, no. Dennis began instantly panicking while I remained completely calm. I wasn't afraid to die if this was the end. <laughs> Garon, what the hell are we supposed to do? Said Dennis in a loud manner. Calm the hell down and listen to me carefully. I said, cut the throttle all the way back. I'm going to pull the yoke all the way back, okay? I said brashly. Dennis shook his head frantically, looking like he was about to cry. I immediately <laughs> then contacted en route air traffic control. En route. Center to Gulfstream 4429. We are declaring an emergency. We are over the Rocky Mountains in a rapid descent for the range. Our controls are frozen and we are running out of time. I said, I now myself was starting to get terrified. All in the years I've flown, I have never thought this would be my death. Gulfstream 4429, extend your flaps and revert to manual controls. Try and create as much drag as you can and some way, somehow find a way to bring it down safely, said the controller, sa sounding more scared than I was. Just at this moment, there was a loud bang on the cabin door. Dennis got up and opened it to see frantically Larry, I mean, sorry, Landon, <laughs> Gary, and Anthony. What the hell is going on? They all said simultaneously. Listen, guys, you need to sit down now and strap into those damn seatbelts if you don't, if you would like a chance to survive. I screamed in an absolute panic. They right away stumbled back into the cabin and strapped in. Well, the plane's nose down. Word. <laughs> the plane's nose down. Nothing was working, and we were within 800 feet of slamming into the snow-filled valley at what was near the highest point of the mountain. At the last second, the yoke cut me some slack and I was able to pull up just enough so we would crash land on the plane's belly. I could now see trees and heavy snowfall on the ground. I love you, Bella. I screamed <laughs> so the black box would save it forever. 
Dennis and I looked at each other one last time and I screamed, Brace for impact! We crashed hard on the bottom. I became nothing but darkness. Were you expecting that? As I was reading this, <laughs> I kind of got some sort of feeling that Something's some up. tragedy was going to happen. Something's coming up. All right, close her out. Is this eight? This is seven. Seven, okay. We two. have three full pages. That, All right. No, four. <laughs> to figure out how four it ends. Three. Yeah, we have four full pages. To oh, God. All right. Chapter seven. <laughs> I'm alive? Sometime in the night, complete blackout. I opened my eyes to find myself laying cramped up with the controls up to my face. The glass cockpit had broken and there was glass all over the place. My head was pounding very hard and I couldn't move my left leg. In the dark moonlight, I could somewhat make out Dennis. His head was flung towards toward, his head was flung toward and there was blood all over the place. I prayed to God he was alive. This has to be a nightmare. Can I please wake up? I began shaking Dennis's arm frantically. Dennis, please wake up. I screamed as loud as I could. I unstrapped myself move, from the move seat. Move the mic closer. There you go. There you go. I unstrapped myself from the seat and crawled over to check his pulse All on right, his maybe, left maybe arm. Away in the, maybe away in there. Nothing. There you go. That's good. Dennis was really dead. The kid was only in his early 20s. Fuck, rest in peace, I began Dennis. to find myself crying uncontrollably, and I haven't even thought about the other three men on board with us. But what even caused the plane to wreck in the first place? It has to be a mechanical error. Was it because we were under the influence? No, no, it couldn't be. We handled the situation the best we possibly could. I instantly began to check my pockets. My phone was missing, but I still had my wallet in my back pocket. The radio was completely shot and wasn't even giving off the least bit of static. I tried looking around for some kind of cover to combat the chilly Rocky Mountain air. I just also remembered seeing how much snow was on the ground before we hit the ground. After searching around for something, anything, to help me, I came up empty-handed. Feeling completely hopeless, I just decided to sit there, just praying that God himself would come down from the heavens and take back up with him. Just at that moment, there was a loud banging on the door. Garon! Dennis! Are you guys alive? Please, answer me! Anthony was still alive, thank God. Yes, Anthony. I'm still here, buddy. Give me a minute. I'll unlock the door. Oh, thank God. It's not looking good out here. Anthony hollered back. Overwhelming with hope, I crawled out of the seat and on to the floor in agony. I slowly stood up and crutched over to the door and unlocked it to find Anthony standing right by it looking like a train wreck as well. Thank God you're okay, he screamed as he hugged me tighter than ever. We made our way back into the cabin that stunk of jet fuel and had gaping hole on the right side. This would be our last salvation <clears throat> if there was any chance of us being rescued from the mountainous hell. I immediately limped over to Gary, who was unconscious and had a large, bloody mark on his forehead. I checked his pulse, hoping he was still alive. Nothing. Damn, rest in peace, Gary. I started to have a nervous breakdown. The fact that I lost two friends, letting alone colleagues, in a matter of a couple hours, broke my heart into pieces. Wiping tears from my face, I looked over to see Anthony attending to Landon. He's unconscious, but he still has a pulse, said Anthony. We're just going to have to cover him up and try to get good night's sleep, Goran. It's all we can do right now. Yeah, let's go to bed. <laughs> and then... I, I solemnly agreed with Anthony because he was absolutely right. Oh, Anthony God. had his phone, but it was dead, and the other electronic devices were nowhere to be found. Anthony got out blankets from the back closet and sprawled out, like, sprawled out on the big couches while the cold air howled outside. 
They so, went to so bed. So even through a plane crash, not only did they decide, <laughs> yeah, let's go to bed. And we didn't even check on the other guy. Who's the other guy? <laughs> what do you mean? Landon, Anthony, and Dennis? Dennis? Anthony, Dennis is dead. Dennis passed. And uh, Gary passed. Gary passed. Gary passed. Okay. And Landon, yeah, he has a pulse, yeah, but he's unconscious. Checked, nobody checked on Gary in the text. Uh, also, on top of that, <laughs> um, I love how you just went through a plane crash, but somehow this big couch is just perfectly intact. <laughs> yeah, they're like, <laughs> we went through a massive plane crash, but <laughs> let's this big couch is perfectly fine. Let's let's get a campfire in here. <laughs> Chapter eight, in a different lifetime. Oh, July shit. July twenty fifth, two thousand and seventeen. <laughs> it's, just... it's been a long five. No, it's like eight. It's been five long years since that fateful night in the Rocky Mountains. No, it's you been are like ter- eight years. <laughs> you <laughs> you are terrible at math. How did you not see this? Two thousand and nine <laughs> to two thousand and seventeen. Oh, it's so bad. Is eight years. <laughs> How did no one read this shit and say, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> Gary, why did you do this? <laughs> okay. Okay, let's finish strong. It's been a long five. <laughs> it's been a long eight years. Okay, it's been five long years ever since that fateful night in the Rocky Mountains. Five long years. <laughs> you said it twice. <laughs> you said, said it twice, twice in the same paragraph. <laughs> Five long years that really changed my perspective on life in the best possible way. (laughs) Anthony and I survived two weeks in the harsh climate while we watched all of our other friends perish, including Landon, just a few days before our rescue. For those two weeks, Anthony and I became brothers. After we ran (gasps) out of food and water, we trugged our way out into the cold and survived by elk hunting and harvesting rodents for meals. (laughs) What? Elk hunting? They turned into bear What did they hunt? What guns did they have? They turned turned into bear grills. I'm sorry, rats. Wait, are they in New York City? They're in the mountains, dude. And they're hunting fucking rats. And they're eating rodents. And rodents. Oh, holy fuck. (laughs) This is so... But, 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 Anthony was experienced in the outdoors and he used all but his knife to lead us to survival. (laughs) A knife. He He killed an elk with a knife. With a knife. Once we were rescued on the date of August 8th, by a Black Hawk helicopter, <laughs> we were rushed to Denver International Airport, where we were greeted by hundreds of reporters, journalists, and many others. Oh, but Jesus the important Christ. one out of those people was my loving <laughs> wife, Bella. Right as I saw her face, I broke down like a little kid and collapsed into her arms. Oh. My mother, father, and sister were also there, which made me feel like the luckiest guy on earth, oh. to be surrounded by my family in the midst of tragedy. My sister was was given a special duty from reporting for her college or Chicago news station, which was one of the biggest for her and her life. Once the NTSB investigated the crash, it was ruled out an engine failure and an issue with the flaps and speed brakes. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God. It wasn't due to us. Thank God. It wasn't. <laughs> I was able Thank to get God. away from the crash without oh. any hints oh. of Dennis and I being under the influence. <laughs> That's the next line. Wait, oh my God. A secret Anthony and I pledged to keep to one another forever. <laughs> Things could have been a lot worse in the aftermath, but hey, I think it was God's way of, of giving uh. me a very harsh warning. I now found myself lying by my backyard pool on a sunny Wednesday afternoon with my wife right next to me. My sacred son, Nico, was now four and a half and was showing signs of genius capabilities. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. By the, end, by the end of his first year being in existence, he was already putting together full sentences and showing emotions of an adult. <laughs> what? A year old? He was about to start his first year of kindergarten in the next month and was more than eager to learn. Uh, we were one big happy family. I shortly began flying. I shortly began flying in my father's footsteps for United Airlines. Just after two years of service, I became a captain for the company and loved every second of it. Anthony and I assumed role of president. Anthony soon assumed role of president of Goldman Sachs in place for the late Gary Cohen. Oh my God! Man, 
did I miss him and Landon? And who could have forgotten about young Dennis? Young I Dennis. always thought about them every single day since it had happened. Anthony and I would call each other every week and just talk about our lives at this point. He was newly married and a much more re- responsible man at this point in time. We had both quit drugs and alcohol and were focused on becoming successful men for the long run. The one thing I had learned from all of this is not to abuse substances, <laughs> especially during work. I started living a much happier life and healthier lifestyle that bettered all of my loved ones, <laughs> not just myself. Life had become amazing and I cannot complain for one second. The end. Avionics, a memoir. Oh my God. By Garrett Belich. <laughs> oh, clap it up. Clap it up. A big thank you to Mr. Santino Saccone for reading, for putting up with my grammar. What do you What do you have to that say? That was the biggest crock of shit I've ever read <laughs> in my life. What do you have to say about avionics, a memoir? Um, it was very drug induced. It was horribly drug induced. Um, very out of touch. Very out of touch. <laughs> Super. You couldn't be more out of touch. It takes a It takes a nice little look back at what 2015 maybe the comedy we could had have been like um overall i mean yeah yeah i i i, I loved this experience of it it was a great if experience. i read this when i was 17 i would have thought you were the fucking next like f scott fitzgerald <laughs> the, the next or stephen somebody. king yeah the next best writer um it's I'm, written there are high there the descriptions are good some of it is actually decent there's there's potential some of it is actually decent and it kind of shows with uh you know some of your ability to write now but um you've grown very much since <laughs> since avionics a memoir oh my god and the the best part was the high knees in the bathroom yeah and i'm he's trying wearing, to calm down he's wearing, wearing, <laughs> yeah yeah he's trying to do high knees in the bathroom to calm down or he walks in a circle and, <laughs> yeah, and he walks in a circle and counts to 10 like his life's just oh, gonna change shit we're gonna have a lot we're gonna have like three 30 youtube clips for this one at least yeah there's gonna I mean, be a lot of good uh, clips <laughs> Garon. Garon Townsend. Garon Townsend from Illinois. Well, thank you again, Mr. Saccone. A hell of a reading. Thank you, Gartholomew. This was um This was lovely. The Riverside Report was great. I had a good time doing this. We this, was, a, this was a lot of fun. We had a little good two part podcast experience. We'll do this anytime I'm here. We're gonna Absolutely. bring up the equipment. I might have to write another book and we'll do yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, or maybe next I'll write a book. You and write then, a book and and Five or eight years, whatever you want to decide it <laughs> yeah. to be, I'll re- we'll, we'll reread it. This book went, it just sat, it sat around for years and it's traveled with me. I've never, never even thought about throwing it away. Now, how much of this did you forget that you wrote? 90%. I remember so the basic story. Like you story. remember the synopsis of yeah, the story. I know, I they, know. They it's... have a cocaine and drug filled adventure. They yes. go to, and they go party in LA they crash and, the plane and they cr- and they they come back home and crash a plane. Yes. Like that's pretty much when we reread this the last two episodes. That's pretty much the extent of what you remember. I don't remember Lambargios. I'm I, sure <laughs> I like, I'm sure as I'm reading it like it all came back to you or no. Writing the book, I'll be honest, it's not it's not like a total blur, but I remember like I remember it being a super rushed and like not nervous, but there was a lot of hype around the senior project. It's sure. Like, you know, people were building it was a, cars. It was a big deal. Like people, people were, some people were building cars. Yeah. Some people were, were, you know, doing construction and like restructuring. Meaningful you know, shit. Yeah. Doing stuff. Charity. That, yeah. Doing very f- philanthropic things. And, and it was taken very seriously to say the least. So you could tell touring, it gets right. Like the third or fourth chapter, I'm definitely drunk for those. And then by like the fifth or sixth chapter, I'm like trying to, I'm trying to wrap it up. I'm, so, like, I'm like, all right, let's wrap this shit up. So I remember if I'm right, I could be very wrong. We needed 120 hours. Was that? Yeah. Oh, or was it like 240? Yeah, it was 120. Oh, or was no, it more close. than that? No, it was 120. Okay. Nowhere close. We needed 120 hours of service. And a lot could have went into that. I'm not saying it took you 120 hours. Maybe 20. 
Or but 30. like <laughs> over what, over like how many months? Because obviously you didn't sit down for 20 hours straight. How like how months? long do you think it took you to write that actually? I feel like I started in November. I started in November. I remember it being winter time, Thanksgiving. And that was like the height of my degenerate phase of being a high schooler. So that's when, you know, I'd have the, I'd have the six pack of Labat Blue next to me and I'd be cracking beers and writing the third or fourth chapter and Dave Franco somehow made it Dave in. Dave Franco made it in. And I'd say I'd probably finished it in, I finished it early because I wanted it to be over with. So like March, Feb, it was due in April, right? Like April, the third, like really, literally yeah, now. Yeah, it was due around this time <clears throat> when we were in school. It was, it was like right before, it was probably like a month. No, yeah, it was like, like two months before we were done with school. Just about. You'd be finished with it, yeah. So I sat on this for a while. Like, I didn't, no one read it. Yeah, like, did, was, you, did you, like, ha, obviously nobody read it, but, like, did you, you like the lamination? Read? No. Did you, I don't. <laughs> did, you, <laughs> did you proofread it at all, or did you just write it one Clearly take not. through? Clearly not. <laughs> yeah, but, like, you could have proofread it and still missed stuff. I did, no, I, yeah, I definitely read it at least two or three times, but I was so sick of it. Like I hated this book. Like when mm-hmm. I, in the moment of writing this, I was like, this thing sucks. And I just want to be done with it and get it the fuck over with. And I, I didn't understand the appreciation I'd have for it almost 10 years later, but it's a fucking gem. And I wish I would have sat down and taken it a little more seriously. I wish I would have gave it the 420 hours because it would have gone much longer. It would probably have been a little more fucked up, but there would have been a lot more comedy probably would have been longer i mean it was only it was only 35 pages and already in la and they're like all right let's go to the airport crash the plane and then eight years five years later (laughs) we're not good with time fucking hero but that's it that's avionics and it it, it, it's kind of it inspired me a lot with you reading it i don't know i need to write more i just need to write stories and see what the see where it goes what was like I know we talked about this in the first episode, but like, what were the true inspirations for this? You were obviously, you had every desire to become a pilot. And you, like, what what struck the drug-filled, party-invested life? Denzel Washington. It was Flight, the movie. I've never seen it, so that doesn't You've help You've never seen me. Flight? I'm not a movie uh, guy. I don't watch a lot of movies. Dude, you have so to So like, watch. what happens in that movie? Like, he's just so, a pilot who like likes party? <laughs> I ripped it so bad. It, it's he's a pilot that he drinks. Spoilers. Like, yeah, I, I'm spoiler alert. I'm sorry, guys. He's a pilot that likes to drink. Him and this dorky, he has this dorky co-pilot, which is like the inspiration of Dennis. And the plane, like he he's fucked up. Like he's flying the plane drunk, and he flips the plane upside down. He's flying the plane upside down over a church, and then like he has to crash the plane because the plane's fucking. It was a mechanical failure. Yeah, and like the feat was remarkable like the feat he pulled off was like they're like he saved like 10 people i think like it was five, heroic yeah five to ten people still died but like for the circumstances everyone should have died and he was a hero and then the toxicology report came out and they're like oh he was fucked up and he was drinking the mini bottles like mm-hmm. the airplane he, bottles yeah he 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 finessed the the flight attendant and grabbed mini bottles and was drinking them like before takeoff and the first the first captain or the first officer is looking at him like he's crazy like he knew he was drunk. Like he, it yeah. was very like the movie flight was super fucking unrealistic, just like the book. But that was the first influence. And the second one was the Wolf of Wall Street, the book, not the movie. Okay. I I've read, never read the book. There, There's two of them. There's okay. part one and then it's catching Wolf of Wall Street when he gets arrested. Okay. And it's very more in depth than the movie. And that was kind of the influence for Gary Cohen and Townsend and all of those fellows. Bueller. Okay. That was that was the that was the draw, and then I don't I don't know I'm I'm kind of impressed with like the detail like it was there's very, a lot of detail it's very descriptive we know that Kalat was living in shitty Mumbai Kalat's a fucking beast dude Kalot's isn't a beast. Kalat a beast and and the Dave Franco cameo <laughs> I don't now, know where that but came here's from. the thing in 2015 like he was big shit Dave Franco was a huge name for those who who didn't know that. And I'm not saying he's not a big name now. He's still a big name in Hollywood, but at that but time, he was in everything. In every, 2015. Is he the, he's the one that was in, um, he's the younger one. Right? He's the younger one. James is the James older. is the older one. Yeah. 
So like, yeah, Dave and James, like <laughs> if they did any movie together or not, like yeah. you went to see it. Huge you know deal. what I mean? That was like the Seth Rogen era. Yeah. Yeah. It was the stoner comedy era. Yeah. He's like, era. Oh, J- James is picking me up from there. <laughs> James. Yeah. 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 James, <laughs> James is in town. He's not doing anything. And he picked me up 30 minutes <laughs> after I, uh, after I crowd surfed at a club leaving the VIP section. And then de- poor Dennis, dude, he didn't deserve that kind of death, but yeah. Yeah, not his, his descent was way too like his descent was just like it was literally like bipolar like he was just a new person that he next was a day. whole new person he's like all right let's he, do three lines of blow I'm he ready. saw he saw a new he saw a new world open up right uh, before his eyes well that's avionics thank you all for listening to the two-part special i'm traveling i'm heading my ass down the dominican you're traveling yeah D- to dc yeah, i'm going to dc for three days and then so and then uh seven springs for a little golf trip oh a little little golfy golf yeah dude i hope it doesn't rain though it's supposed to rain Saturday. you've been on you get your new irons yet no they should be in this week i'm really thinking they're not going to be in by this weekend probably hopefully well you're you're not gonna well you'll be back kind of so I'll be back Friday, and if they're in before Friday, I'll be able to grab them and throw Stop them in my by. bag. Yeah, because i got to come here first before I go to Seven Springs. Oh, well, hopefully you could hit the, what, Robinson? What? The, your, your golf No, course. they're getting delivered oh, here. Oh, they're coming to your house. Yeah, they're coming oh, straight well here. well, then fuck, dude. So You're I'm fine. hopeful. Dude, and you know what else? Since, since, you know, the people who I golf with probably aren't going to listen to this, I bought a green jacket for our for our golf trip really? yeah and so gonna it, it it's out. gonna be in tomorrow <laughs> it's gonna be in to, it's gonna be in tomorrow and uh i'm gonna i'm gonna show it off friday night and, and we're gonna come up with some sort of system oh. since there's different handicaps and stuff we're gonna come up with some sort of system for you know and then the winner gets the and green then the winner jacket. gets to keep the green jacket Fuck yeah yeah that's yeah. actually yeah, awesome. so so my initial <laughs> idea for the jacket idea it was gonna be goofy it was going to be like a USA jacket, like a like a stars and stripes jacket, or it was going to be like like a cash jacket where it was like an all one hundred dollar bill or something stupid, <laughs> yeah, right? Like a John Daly. Yeah, like so, like a really goofy, like really cheap, yeah, like sports coat. All of the ones that I found that I really wanted, they did not have Prime, and I need it by this weekend. It was like, like an no. idea I had over the weekend. <laughs> yeah, so I had to spend an extra twenty dollars. I got a green jacket. Here, I'll show you a picture of it. Cause you'll actually, you'll actually fucking like it. I think. How many? What, what days are you golfing? Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I wouldn't have been able to take off for work, and plus I'm going out of town anyway. So. Oh yeah. But nonetheless, um, some people are driving up Thursday night and playing Friday, Saturday, coming back Sunday. Oh okay. I'm just going up Friday night. And playing Saturday, and playing and coming Saturday. back Sunday. So Saturday will be the, the competition the day for the uh, that's for sick. the literal green jacket. That's very it's a, nice. it's a it's authentic. Yeah, it's super authentic. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah, we have a literal green jacket to play for. Uh, you can find those on Amazon if you want to. I might have to. Jacket. I might have to buy one for myself. I have to say, I did take the inspiration from somebody on TikTok that they had the same kind of thing, but instead of theirs being one day, they literally did their own masters where they went on a golf trip and literally played Thursday, Friday, four Saturday, Sunday. And, and what they did is stroke play all four days with handicaps, with handicaps, but their handicaps are really close. So it's only a couple strokes. Yeah. And then every beer you drank took a stroke off of your, your total score. Really? Yeah. So oh, like, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So you look like, the whole trip or just when you're throughout golf? the whole trip, no way. So each round oh, wow. you got your score after how many beers you drank that day. And then you could drink at night. So, so you're no, going, no, 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 no. It was only while oh, golfing. Just while only golfing. while golfing. I was gonna say you could. But hit the still, bar because like it brings up like that, that fine line of how many beers can I afford before my game goes before out your the game window? Fucks yeah. Up. yeah. So wow, that's it's a cool, cool idea. We didn't have enough time to plan for that. I drank like four on eighteen, like the eighteenth fairway. I just crushed four beers. When this past weekend? No, like if I was playing. In oh, that if you were format, playing, yeah. yeah. You're would, like, fuck it. I'll take dude, an eight and just. You know, shave four strokes off for par. Seventeen and eighteen. I'm going nuts. Oh yeah, <laughs> I go nuts We're on black and out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. Well, all right, sir. Well, we'll hey, be back you. Bayside in a few weeks. We're gonna take a little hiatus from the podcast game, but yeah, enjoy your vacation. Thank you, sir. La Dominicana. We're gonna have a good time. I don't have to pay for shit for a whole week. I can just eat, fun. eat and drink and be a degenerate. You have so fun. That's gonna make be sure great. you tip. I'll tip well. I'll tip. Talk to I'll you soon, buddy. Dominicans well. Thank you, everyone, for listening to the Bayside Report.